Hey there, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you so, so much uh, for joining this webinar uh, on this Wednesday early evening. My name is Sylvia. I'm the Managing Director of Grierson Trust, and I'm joined today by a really fabulous panel who are going to help you get a better sense of what this program is about. So um, Grierson Trust is a film charity that operates within the UK. Essentially, our mission is to kind of celebrate documentary um, and factual programming um, and also we do that across various different projects. We run the British Documentary Awards that happens every year in November, uh, which is a real true celebration of documentary across every single sector, um, from sports documentaries, music docs, cinema docs, constructed pieces, so uh, including student and short docs as well. Um, and our other kind of main project really um, is to support the future talent of documentary makers um, within the UK. So um, by documentary talent, um, I mean those who are looking to break into the documentary factual sector, but then also not only kind of new talent um, who are kind of fresh out of school or university, but those who may have worked uh, within different sectors and are looking to kind of sidestep into working in documentaries and factual programming. So um, I'm joined today by a really fantastic panel who I'll introduce in a moment. Um, but this program in particular is focusing on those wishing to work in production management. So we're looking for people who have uh, who have a background of at least three years experience in a sector where they've developed skills that can be transferred into working in production management. And you'll hear a little bit more from our panelists in a moment in terms of what that means and what those skills are. Um, so I'd really love to introduce our panel. So we have uh, Audrey Duffy, who's joining us, who's the manager of the documentaries department at Netflix. We have Heidi Carmichael, who was a Grierson Doc Lab in Focus Production Management uh, trainee last year. So she's part of our alumni, who's currently on her placement at 72 Films. We have Lucy Matthews, who is also an alumni of last year's production management program. Uh, who's recently finished her placement at Minnow Films and has actually been kept on uh, for a contract extension, which is fantastic. And we were also joined by Louise Murray, who's the Director of Production at Minnow Films. Uh, so we'll hear from everybody in a moment. Um, just to say, in terms of a bit of housekeeping, you're welcome to keep your camera off if you wish. Please do keep your microphones off. If you have any questions throughout the uh, webinar, It'd be great if you could use the chat function and just pop any questions that you have throughout the program or throughout the webinar. And then there'll be a moment where the panelists will be addressing your questions. So I'd love to hand over to my colleague, uh, Yen, who is the Director of Training Programs at Grace and Trust, um, who will take us further. Thanks, Sylvia. Hello, everybody. Delighted to see so many of you um, able to join us this evening. As Sylvia says, I'm, I'm the Director of Training for um, training programs for the Grierson Trust. So in addition to this program, I also look after our editing um, training scheme, also supported by Netflix and our long established uh, Grierson Doc Lab core, which is in its, um, I think we're in our 12th um, iteration this year, which is the new entrance. But the difference between the, that one and also the, um, between that one and the Netflix ones is that it, um, they're looking for people who are much older, in terms of experience and uh, for the production management one, obviously it's about career changes and people are pivoting potentially from other industries. Um, I expect there'll be lots of questions that you guys will have, to, um, um, you will have. Unfortunately, we've only got an hour. So any questions that we, um, just to say that, um, any questions that we are unable to um, answer today, we will be um, downloading them and we will be um, making them into FAQs and you can return to our website to, um, um, to get some answers. But if you have any other questions, please do come back to us. We're, you know, we're open. We want to hear from people. Um, so don't hesitate to get in touch. A um, little bit about myself. So um, in addition to um, the running the programmes, um, what I do with uh, Tanya, who's our, uh, my colleague, um, who's also on the call um, as a training coordinator, I'm the point person really is about brokering those relationships with industry and supporting you um, through the 
through the program and the journey that you'll take if you're successful in getting one of the eight spots um, into the industry. And we pride ourselves in the fact that um, with the small groups that we take on each year, we get a, we get to know you, you get to know us. It's about us supporting you and getting you job ready to go into the industry and working with fantastic partners like um, Netflix um, to diversify and, you know, um, raise the profile of the opportunities that there are in the industry. So um, moving forward, um, what I'd like to do is just to help us to get a sense of who's in the room. If you can go onto your browser, and that could be on your laptop or on your phone, and you go to a website called menti.com, <clears throat> Um, it asks you for a code, and uh, we've got the code there on the screen, but um, Tanya, if you can also put it in the chat, that's lovely. Um, is what we've got is just a few questions to help us, um, help us um, establish who's in the room, um, and um, that's really helpful. So that's great. Got well, seven of you um, replying. Just give you a few minutes to do that for us. This is anonymous, as you can see, but it just helps us, as I said, just to um, for myself and also our speakers in the room to establish who's joining us this evening. Brilliant to see so many people who are. Uh, looking to pivot from other sectors that's great and also about other people coming to join returning to the industry and that's one of the really important areas that we want to be developing and um, supporting because i don't think there's enough around that area brilliant okay i'm just going to return go move over to the next question you can still see that in your in your own screen though. <clears throat> Next question is just about geography. Um, we are a nationwide um, organization and also um, what we do is work across the whole of the UK. Um, but we like to know where people are. That's great. Um, for those of you outside of London, or uh, just to be um, transparent, most of the placements, if not all, um, are going to be based in London. We have a small cohort, um, small um, sector around uh, natural history in Bristol, but the majority of our placements to date have been in um, with production companies based in London. Audrey from Netflix will talk a bit more about that. For those of you who therefore will have to relocate to undertake your placements, um, what we do is that we do support you in that in terms of um, signposting to um, um, uh, websites and um, networks where you can find accommodation. And also we are supported by Screen Skills. We work closely with them. They also will provide, um, which you can apply for, for bursaries to help with relocating. And if you're successful, we do um, support you in that. That's great. Thank you very much. <clears throat> and then also this, this, I think this is our final um, slide for this section. Why are you here this evening? Why are you joining us? That's great. Thank you very much. Oh, someone says you can't see my screen. Oh, I don't know what's happened. Oh, Hannah. Thank you. I don't know what's happened there. We can't see your screen. Oh, fixed. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. I'm going to stop sharing. I don't know what happened there. I thought you could see my screen. Um, there's obviously some strange things. Okay. Thanks, everybody. That's really helpful. Um, <clears throat> so what I want to do now is 
to say that I hope everybody realizes this scheme is not for is for um, not is not an editorial training scheme for those of you who haven't yet looked at um, because there are so many people who are pivoting from other careers. Um, please do look at the Screen Skills Careers map. Um, it is in the FAQs, but also um, what we'll do is that we will share it afterwards as well, if people haven't seen it, but it does make clear what the differences are between production management and editorial. Um, we do want to be clear about this isn't a shortcut for people who think that they um, want to be working in editorial, and this could be a way of getting it in. Um, we are firmly um, in the belief and wanting to support people who have transferable skills into production. So, um, with that, that background information, which is really helpful, I'd like to hand over to Audrey. So um, Audrey is our, um, as our colleague at Netflix, we've been working with for a number of years now, and actually was the person that helped us set the scheme up three years ago. So delighted that we're still working with, um, with her. Audrey, can I hand over to you and ask you to just to, to set out the um, set out the pick um, the overview of the scheme, why Netflix uh, wanted to have the scheme um, established, and talk about um, I suppose the career paths because I mentioned edit this isn't about editorial; it is certainly about production. Um, what the differences are and why you think it's really important. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for giving up an hour of your evening to join. We're really excited to have you all. Um, as Yen said, I work at Netflix in the documentaries department. I've been there about five years now. Um, and before that was freelance across many different companies and projects across the UK. Uh, so I very much am passionate about documentaries and particularly production management. So I will try to not get carried away and stick succinctly to time. Because uh, as Yen knows, I could go on about this for a long time. Um, yeah, a few years ago, um, Grison approached us about training and it's been really rewarding for us to work with them in identifying identifying roles that we really felt needed some attention and there was probably a shortage which was both production management and um, editing so they're the two different schemes that we work closely with Grison on. Um, production management is I often think to me obviously because I do it I think the most exciting bit of the entire industry and uh, Lou may agree with me on this I think it's incredibly creative and um, you are usually first in and last out uh, which means you're really embedded in that show with that team you're very much the person who's going to get it to the finish line um, and I, I have always found it amazing that the challenge is to take everybody's blue sky thinking but we have the restrictions of the budget and the schedule and it's our job to be the problem solver and to make those dreams happen and so it's constant firefighting it's constantly being thrown new challenges i love it because i've done it for more years than i want to say on this call um, and i still learn something new every single day i still have a challenge that i have to work out and problem solve too so i think if you're that kind of person who loves that who really enjoys embedding with a team and finding those solutions then this is probably the right career path for you. Um, and I think documentaries is something that I'm really passionate about. I always view it as never having to decide what you wanted to be when you grew up, because at any given moment, you could be on a farm, you could be in a police car, you can be in a royal palace, you could be dealing with someone going to outer space. Like, it's such a variety within the factual space um, and it's ever changing and the access that you can have to work on and people entrust you with often the worst moments of their life and trust you to tell that story. And it's such an amazing thing to be part of. So I think if, if any of that is resonating with you, I would say production and factual are the right places for you. Um, in terms of who we work with, lovely people like Lou, who's on this call, but we're really fortunate in that we work with a lot of the best companies um, out there and making factual content today. So the placements are with the top of the top in the industry you're going to really amazing companies that make phenomenal content and um, some of the great things that come out of our team just so you're clear that they're not always uk stories uh, our team has done tinder swindler trust no one american murder tiger king they've all come through um our team so they can be absolutely global stories that you might be working on even though you'll be based in the UK while working on them uh, just to say the pace, the placements are paid so no one is expecting you to give your time for free you will be on the payroll at the company that you go to work with um, 
and we really try to take time to make sure the placement is right. So in our mind, it's certainly not a tick box. We wanna find you the right company, the right fit for you, where your area of interest is. And we really try to take the time to make sure that pairing is, is correct. Um, and excited that we have two of our wonderful trainees uh, on the call who can, can speak to the success of that. Um, but I think it's really important for us and, and we do pretty lengthy placements because we wanna really give you the opportunity to see the role embed with the company and be really part of of a project and um, so you would be on a netflix project for that placement period and we really want you to give the time so you understand the role and you also get to witness all the different aspects of it so in general you'd be going in at what we call kind of a production secretary level um, which is kind of the more junior of those roles and then kind of the progression up is to production coordinator production manager live producer production exec head of production and um, so there's a nice chain of progression that can be undertaken and all our trainees are, are taking that at different paces based on previous experience and skills so there's certainly opportunities to stay in the industry move up the chain um, and I think to me as I say there's real stability in the production side as opposed to some of the more editorial where they get shorter con contracts so I think if it's stability that has put you off entering TV before I would say in my experience I have not been without work and um, there's a real big demand for production and for who are skilled in this area and it really is a skill um, and one that we hope you will embrace but um, just in covering some of the things that production touch we do recruitment hr legal compliance music clearance um contributor care care for the team logistics managing the budget it's it really is so many varied skills that you ca are called on to do this so the course really tries to delve into lots of those areas and give you an overview which will then mean you, you learn more on the job um, but I think it's really exciting I'm so proud to work with Gris and their ability to find talent in this country I think is completely unmatched the trainees that have come forward on the schemes to date are absolutely spectacular um, and just people that we just didn't knew, know existed and they're making such an impact uh, to our programming and to the industry already so we're super excited to be doing another year and I think you, know, you essentially become part of the documentary family the Grierson family and the Netflix family so we hope that the people who come through the schemes are kind of in touch with us for the rest of their careers and we can help where we can and we're super excited to to see them fly so really excited for the applications this year and um yeah can't wait to hopefully meet more of you at interview stage Thank you very and much. I think I'm three to five. You know, that, that's brilliant. That's, off, that, that's brilliant on the dot. That's on the dot. So just to say that um, there's a fantastic overview that Audrey has given you. As the scheme has grown, because this will be the third iteration, um, you know, in terms of the support that you'll get, you'll also get a buddy. So you might be buddied up with Lucy or Heidi or somebody from the 2021 group. We have industry mentors. Um, it's a small group. You become your own network. And, you know, there's power in that. And then also what happens is that once you've done the scheme, we migrate you to our bigger alumni group. So there's a network of other people who've been through um, the other um, programs that we have so that you can call on them to support and help you. Because this is about like finding your tribe. It's about finding other people who have the passion that you have and how we can help and drive that forward. So that, you know, we just wanted to mention that. Um, next, I'd like to invite up Heidi um, to talk about her experience and talk about her journey into the industry. Um, uh, Heidi is, uh, was one of the later people to um, start her placement. As Audrey says, we try to, you know, be carefully place people with the right company. And this is a bit, it's a jigsaw that's continuously moving. It isn't able to say you will do your placement at X, Y, and Z. Lots of different parameters and things beyond our control, which is to do with production, which we will go into if you get onto the scheme. Um, so we can never say that you will do your placement at this time. It, there's lots of things beyond our control and we can never predict when that might be. Um, but um, Heidi, can you um, just give yourself, we'll go five minutes, um, talk a bit about yourself, where you came from, what you're doing now, and some of the highlights of, of the scheme that you've had an experience to date. That'd be wonderful. Thank you. Hi, hi. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, so my name's Heidi. Uh, I'm from Greater London, um, so I'm sort of like Heathrow area, Middlesex. Um, and then my career before pivoting into PM, um, 
all sorts really. Um, so I originally trained in the arts. I was an actor um, and then I did producing um, on my own sort of low budget and a uh, director that I worked with, low budget short films for a few years. Um, and it didn't really, it didn't really twig at the time that what I really enjoyed about producing was the nuts and the bolts and the making the project happen. Um, I didn't even know about production management as a career option. Um, and then I I had to take a bit of a break basically because two people in my family got quite ill and I'm still a part-time carer for my dad. So I took a part-time job um, near me in Staines, so sort of Middlesex, Surrey, in the healthcare industry, uh, in a dental practice. And I was doing treatment coordinating and front of house. So again, a lot of transferable skills that I didn't know at the time, but were perfect for production management. Um, and all these things from all the different backgrounds in, in terms of sort of interpersonal skills, organizational skills, admin skills, being able to talk to people on the phone, um, like liaising with like laboratories and suppliers and getting things, you know, next day, or you build, you build those relationships, you know, all of these things that I just thought I could only use for, for those pockets of those jobs that I was doing along the way you just scoop them all up and I was able to take them into production management um yep yeah. so in terms of how did I get um onto doc lab a friend of mine had done uh the doc lab scheme a few years ago and I was talking up really about wanting to pivot wanting to do something different and um, she said, well, Grierson's uh, Doc Lab production management scheme is open again for production, um, for applications. And she said, um, you've got so many transferable skills, you'd be an idiot not to apply. So I thought, well, I don't want to be an idiot um, all the time, every day. Uh, so I applied. And um, like with so many things in the arts, you don't, you don't know or you don't necessarily think that you're even going to get to the interview stage. Um but always trying to be optimistic. So had the interview and yeah, really, really grateful that I was selected for the scheme. In short, it's, it's changed my life. <laughs> it's opened up uh, a pathway to a new career route that I had no idea existed. Um, and what, and a refreshing career route because being working class, I think growing up, you only were sort of told stories of what, what career paths were available to you um so working at 72 films and I also did a work experience placement at Utopia um when you meet people in production management um and in unscripted in general you literally find out that everyone comes from all, all different walks of life all different backgrounds you know I went to a really academic school where people did medicine as their degree because they wanted to be a doctor or so with production management, you're finding out that people have come from all different careers that they've then pivoted into PM for. So that's really refreshing. Um, da -da -da -da. Oh, highlights of the scheme. Um, finding out. So over the training, uh, over the training week, um, you have so many speakers that uh, come and speak to you and they do sessions about their companies and the projects that they've been working on. And um, you basically realize that a lot of the shows that you enjoy watching, a lot of the content that you enjoy watching, you get to hear about the nuts and the bolts and the people and the processes behind those productions. Um, and it's a kind of it's a kind of peek behind the curtain that you wouldn't usually get, and it's incredibly, incredibly interesting. Um, and also, again, I love hearing people's stories. You, all the speakers that that come uh, over the course of the week, you find out really um, who they are, how they got into PM. Um, That's great, Hardy. We'll sorry, just, I'm probably I'm, talking. No, too okay, much. okay. I'm just keeping an eye on the time. That's fine. Of course. I'm going to hand over to Lucy. I've got uh, Lucy still, but that's great now uh, because I'm sure people will want to interrogate you a bit more. Um, in the Q&A bit. Lucy, can I hand over to you? So your career path is slightly different to uh, Heidi's. Can you talk a bit about yourself uh, for us and share um, what's happened after placement? Hi. Hi, yeah, I'm happy, happy to talk about it. 
So um, I'm a career changer. I spent four years working as an IT consultant uh, for a company called Capgemini. I was a project manager and a service delivery manager. I basically, I went through a period of ill health and I wanted to do something more interesting and what felt more meaningful to me. So I made the decision to like, instead of going back to IT, I would go um, and try and get into film and TV. And yeah, so I wasn't really sure what to do, but I kind of looked at what I did and like, yeah, like the Screen Skill we Skills website and what was out there and production management um, just looked like, quite an obvious choice for me because it had all the things that I liked about project management um but it was more creative and I get it got and I get to be part of making programs that are really interesting and exciting and work with like work with people that I love and yeah I think I think that's about it and, and what were the high? Because you you know you've done your placement. What were the highlights? Yeah. What did you What did you enjoy most about you know some of the things? Um, I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed working with the team. The team really amazing. They're really funny. I really enjoyed getting to like, like we were under a lot of pressure, um, when we were shooting in America, and so many things would be changing constantly that coordinator would have to like um just focus on like one big problem to fix so I would get to do all the, like some coordinating stuff like um all the logistics how people are getting to location food travel hotels and I got to do the call sheet um and it was just like like all the movement that everybody that the, the crew would be doing and timings and everything was up to me and that felt really cool <laughs> And um, at the end of placement, can you talk a bit about, you know, next steps and where you are now? Because, you know, obviously you've got your boss there. Lou, Lou's in the room. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what's, what's happening now for you? Because, um, you know, one of the things that we are, you know, best case scenario, just for the people who are joining us today, best case scenario is for you guys to be kept on on production. You know, you've demonstrated your skill set, um, you know, what we've done helping the um, production companies sort in the wheat from the chaff in terms of preparing you for industry. And, um, you know, we go through a very rigorous process of, about selecting people. So then when you're presented to the indies, they can have confidence in you as individuals to work in the industry. So having gone through that process, if they're ever possible, they are able to keep you on that's what we all want to um and that's what we strive for um and you know lucy is a very good example of that um do you want to talk a little about what's what's happened for you and what you're doing now as much as you can say obviously yeah yeah well so i'm, I'm on the same project that i was on um, we're in post-production now so um it's a lot of looking at archives um and figuring out like different things um to do with like um yeah uh, finding different different pictures that are needed and, and footage and stuff um and it's a lot of like sort of going through receipts and making sure that we've got everything sort of lined up and so on um they kept me on so I'm I'm working I'm still on that product that project but I'm also on a, another one as well um that's just starting up so it's sort of between two which is quite nice and you're obviously selling the glamorous aspect of the job. I, you know, we don't want to give the wrong impression to everybody, but um, it's good that you're talking about the reality of what, what you know, as, as somebody starting off in the industry, um, it's kind of things that you're going to be doing. So thank you very much. I'm sure people will have questions afterwards. I would like to move on to Lou. Lou is a director of production at Minnow Films. And Minnow, I'm delighted to say, well, one of the very first um, production companies when we started our training program back in 2012 and have been with us since and that relationship has evolved now that we're doing production as well so it's brilliant that um, that's happened Lou can you can you talk a bit about from your perspective as working at a production company the value of bringing on trainees why it's important to have new voices coming in and um, yeah it's kind of things that you see um people need to demonstrate to shine to actually excel in in the job as somebody coming in to this um, part of the industry yes of course 
Hi everyone, um, really delighted to be here and sort of give you as much insight as I can. Um, so as Yen said, so I'm the Director of Production at Minnow um, and that means I'm sort of across the entire slate of uh, Minnow's productions. Um, and like Audrey, I am a very firm believer in the brilliance of the production management department and the importance of them. Um, they are very, very big um, and yeah, they're very they're very special sort of to the process. It's it's creative problem solving is is what I say. It's um the creativity that people see in documentary making. A lot of times they um they attach that to the directors or the writers or the composers, but every member of the production management team, right from Heidi and Lucy at production secretary level all the way up through to what myself and Audrey do is creative in and of itself. Um, and it's a huge support to the those that sort of have the more traditionally creative roles. Um, and as Heidi said, a lot of what um, we do touches on so many parts of what people do in, in many other industries. It's organizational, it's um, it's about people management, it's it's about building relationships. And so actually life experience is hugely important, I think, to working in production management, which is why the focus um, on bringing people from other industries and pivoting over um, and bringing you back that may be sort of slightly older um, is, I think, a huge asset. Um, Minnow, is, as Yenna said, has always been a supporter of what um, what Grierson do and getting involved in the production management one um, scheme recently has been so important to us because there is there there isn't much attention and glory given to production management a lot of the time and it is it is a, a sector of the industry that needs lots of new fresh faces um, and that's that's why we support it so heavily and want to help people with transferable skills to come across from theatre or from like IT, it's organizational stuff. The things you'll learn in a dentist office about people skills are just as important as um, understanding how documentaries are made. In fact, actually understanding how documentaries are made is probably the least important thing because you, you figure that out on the job. And it is varied, as Lucy and Heidi have said, you'll do lots of things. Um, and storytelling is at the heart of, of um, what Minnow do, and it's at the heart of what production management at Minnow love. So it's not, it, it is as creative. And what we're keen to do is make sure that we're bringing as many diverse people into the production management sector of the industry and help support people to, to, to tell great stories. Um, so yes, that's... That's hopefully. Is there anything else? Um, John? No, that, that, that sounds good. Can you talk mm -hmm. a bit about, um, I suppose people might not know what an indie production company does in terms of how, you know, different mm -hmm. types of indies and kind of shows. Yeah. Um, a little bit about uh, some background, I think would be helpful. And then we'll, um, for people, just a heads up, uh, we'll be taking questions. So if you've got questions, that'll be great. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so uh, the indie sector uh, is sort of, where, where somewhere like BBC will make productions in-house, the indie sector, we're sort of, we're companies in our own right that, so Minnow, for example, we make we make things for Netflix, we make things for Channel 4, BBC, for American networks and broadcasters. And what we do from, from start to end is generate ideas, pitch those ideas to to variety of broadcasters, and then work with, um, the creatives and the uh, production management teams at those broadcasters to sort of realize what um, those productions would look like. We start uh, we start with the idea, we build it into um, a sort of a more rounded idea. Myself and Audrey then have lots of fun talking about how, how we budget that. Um, and then we see it all the way through to the shooting and the delivering and the hiring of the composers. Um, and so in the indie production companies, I think, especially in the UK industry, are really important um, because they, they they make sure that 
there's a lot of different voices um as well as just broadcasters making stuff in-house and Netflix obviously is a huge supporter of 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 the indie sector in the UK which which has been transformative over the last number of years uh, so yes that's sort of how the process works and how we sit in the environment and I, th I think it's worth, worth just touching on for um, if uh, people are curious about scripted and um you know uh, my pivoting from that sector but just also you know with Netflix especially there's been so many um, um so many documentaries which does recon which is drawing on that on uh, drama it's just worth I suppose touching and um, uh, was it Minnow one of those few companies that actually do straddle both because you've made some um, drama especially Morgan being a director and um, some studio films as well yes scripted scripted is is different but also very much the same I would say especially from a production management point of view I used to work in scripted um, I transferred over to non-scripted when I moved to the UK and now I'm delighted to be back at a company that does both uh, so I can dip my uh, toe in um, Lucy will attest to the fact that on our Netflix shows there's always some drama she's prepping for some in a few weeks time and yeah so the, the production management team that the, the the way it breaks down is slightly different in terms of of career progression and but that it is it is largely similar so i would say to anyone who's thinking of moving from scripted that it is it is it is very much transferable skills that's great thank you very much um we've got about 15 minutes for questions now and i've just noticed um um, got two in the chat but also if anybody uh, um, best way to identify yourself if you have a question is to use the hand function and then you go to the top of my screen in the corner and then I can ask you to share your camera and then you can ask a question yourself but first one um, that we've got is uh, from Billy thank you very much Billy um, wants to know um, what what makes an application stand out so I suppose the best um, you know I, I should be asking um, replying to that but then also asking Audrey in terms of if you get shortlisted and get invited to um, interview what makes people stand out for us I think one of the things that um, you would be surprised um, people getting mixed up actually about when we ask for examples of things that they've watched i.e documentaries how many people actually talk about scripted um, and um, that is that is probably uh, quite more frequent than you would think, actually. You would think that people read the, read the FAQs, read the guidelines and be clear about what they're applying. Um, and yet it's like a cookie cutter experience for them. They're just like cutting and pasting from potentially other schemes and putting it into this one. Can I just be clear? One of the things that will help you is actually watching lots of documentaries, whichever short form, long form, feature, series, um, you know, all different types. We're looking for your passion and that coming through on the screen. Um, but, you know, it is about being a bit of a magpie because, you know, we've I've talked a bit about, um, you know, recon and uh, docudramas as well. It's, no, it's not, not to say that you can't talk about that when, um, later on, but certainly what we're looking for is that um, on the page that you understand what you're applying for. So that'll be one thing. And also that thing about the transferable skills. You know, it seems, you know, just read the questions and be authentic and honest. Don't try to um, talk about things that you'll think that will... Um, that'll curry favour what we want you to do and we're very I like to feel that we are very transparent and we give you clear guidance about what we're seeking we are not trying to trip you up read the question and read the guidelines and read those FAQs read the blogs and you know um, come back to us if you're still confused so that that is you know you know simple things about um, the application Audrey what about interview stage what would you say about people um, that you've interviewed over the last two years what, what is it that makes them stand out I think, as you say, I think passion is a really important one. I think, um, you know, that's ultimately what we're looking for, because the scheme is here to train you in the nuts and bolts of it. We don't expect you to come fully knowing all of those aspects of it. So don't feel like you have to understand all of that. That's what the point of the course is. But having a passion for TV, having a passion for factual content is really important. Um, and I I would also say, don't be afraid to have an opinion. You know, you can say you watch something and you didn't like it. That's fine. I'm sure Lou and I do that many, many times a day because that's part of our role as well. So don't think that you're only here to please. We want, we want to just re get a real sense of you. Just be yourself. Tell us kind of very honestly why you are interested in this. And I think the more authentic you are, that I think really stands out, particularly at the interview stage. Yeah, no, definitely. Thank you very much. Um, next question is um, from Cleona. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Um, once Cleona is asking about the role of production management during post, 
Lou, do you want to take that? Um, yes. So, yeah, do people special because so I suppose that's one of the questions. Some, some, you know, if you're doing a natural history doc series or one off, that could be filming for years. And then in post, it could take a long time. So can you just talk a little bit about genres as well? That might be worth touching that. Then that will be reflected in post as well, I think. Yes, no problem at all. Clean, a good question. Um, so um, production management in post, you can you can have certainly, especially on things like uh, natural history, you will have post supervisors um, who um, oversee, but production management and post supervisors sort of work um, it's 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 largely similar sort of um, organizational and logistics management as it would be through the production stage. Um, it just slightly pivots. You're you're dealing more with uh, commissioning graphics and talking to composers. You're also obviously working alongside the teams in the edits, making sure that they're they're. Um, editing in time they're hitting schedules and deliveries and then a huge amount of it is liaising with the broadcaster um about those deliveries everything from the press team to the tech delivery team to the promos team uh, to make sure that the tech specs are adhered to that you're delivering the right elements at the right time and um, so it can be quite technical um and actually uh, post-production is a part of the process that I adore. Um, a lot of people find it um, less fun than the sexy being on location bit, um, but it really does get you into the nuts and bolts. It's sometimes I find that actually for production management, people starting out, it's almost helpful to start at the back end of a production, learn about all the delivery paperwork and those processes. Um, sometimes learn from other people's mistakes and take that through to your next production. So when you're you're going through and realizing the legal paperwork, the release forms that are all there, um, that you've got your credits right and that you're keeping track of who you should be crediting throughout your production. Um, but yeah, it is a it it is where you see it all come together. It's the magic of of seeing all those months of hard work. Um, and and it comes together and you start, you finally watch a cut and and yeah it just it's singing and yeah it's a wonderful part I would say yeah and I, I think um you know in terms of my learning journey working with and um, training people now going into editing as Audrey said it's, it is where where the stories come you know that's where you join the narrative and you've got hundreds or thousands of hours at times of of rushes and things and that's what you're going to be working on it is absolutely amazing when it all comes together um audrey can you um talk oh god my it's just gone out of my my brain talking about what um oh i can't remember oh archive do you want to talk a little bit about archive i suppose because we haven't touched upon that and you know in post that that does come into play as well um be worth mentioning yeah, so I mean, I think in the factual space in general, archive is so vital to us. Um, you know, we we have in fact made entire features that are just archive. Um, so in case you didn't know, there are more famous ones like Amy or Senna, which went on to win Oscars, and they're fully made up of archive. So, um, but I think what's the bit I love as well is there's a lot of legal around that there's a lot of negotiation there's a lot of trying to manage within the pot of money that you have what can you can afford who owns the rights so it's a bit like being miss marple to me you know someone in the edit is like i really want to use this picture or this bit of footage and it's down to production usually alongside an archivist if you're lucky enough to have one um about trying to source who is the rights owner of that are there multiple rights owner where can we go how do we do that it's the same with music clearances you know there's multiple layers that you have to clear to use a piece of music and I always find it really fascinating and um, so you're kind of building that entire jigsaw piece together because obviously you want creatively you want that in the film or the series but you have to kind of unpick all of that to ensure that you're okay to use it so yeah, it's a bit like being detective and clearance expert and lawyer and accountant all in one. So yeah, like Lou, it's it's a phase of the production that I always find really, really fascinating. Yeah, and um, we touched on some jargon as well. Um, deliverables, do you want to just give a um, just potted, um, potted uh, description of what deliverables is? And also the difference, because Netflix, global streamer, how that might, that, how that varies from, you know, a broadcaster here in the UK. I think that'd be worth just unpacking a little bit for them. 
Yeah, I'm going to say I'm pretty sure Lou's uh, up-to-date knowledge is better than mine. But yes, each each company that you would, um, or broadcaster or streamer that you will be commissioned by, will have a list of what they require when you send that film um, or series into them. So, um, which I think as Lou said there, in terms of paperwork, so there'll obviously be the technical deliverables, which is the actual footage. It's, it's how that actually plays out. It's your files that will come from the post house of how that's managed. We also then will take LTO, which is our basically our long term storage, which is very large tapes that get shipped around the world to make sure we have that footage for the rest of time. Um, and then there's a lot of paperwork involved. So obviously what we need is any of the, the music clearance information. If you've had a composer, there's contracts to do with that. We have um, like a time code of the entire project. So any archive that's in it, we need all the clearance information in that. And um, so there's a lot of different layers that are required. Um, often then marketing will want to know, can they take all the footage to create a trail? Can they use any images? Are there restrictions, which a lot of the time there will be, which again, often it's down to production to manage that communication to ensure we don't accidentally use a clip of someone who said they can't use it in marketing or publicity or on social channels. So it's really just being across all those. I mean, someone used to refer to me, you know, it's like you're in the airplane controller and you're just trying to make sure everything lands safely. So there's a lot going on. So everything is always different and there's a lot of different pieces you're juggling. Um, but it's all to ensure that that project can go out safely and legally and make sure that it has the best chance of success. That's great. Thanks, Audrey, because I, th I just I just wanted to bring that into the conversation because I want to give you guys who are thinking of applying. And hopefully you will, you know, the breadth of things that um, you will come in contact with over the, um, you know, your career in this early part of the career. But also just touching on some of these stuff that we will also go with you. We It's a very intense six days that we have with you. It will be in person this year and um, going to be um, hosted um, by Netflix. So we'll be in their offices. And you will be thrown, uh, don't make no apologies for that, a lot of information at you. Um, but, you know, if you're hungry for this, if you've got the passion, it'll, you know, you, you'll be absorbing it and, and be like sponges, basically. But there is a lot, there is a lot to take on board. And I don't think we need, we should be shying away from that. Um, but um, thank you uh, for that, for, for that reply. Um, nuts and bolts and i suppose we need to cut to the chase about money um because you know people are going to be potentially giving up jobs or and that's happened in um last year's group for instance where people did actually take sal drops in salary and actually left one sector to come into ours um somebody's asked um and this is cleo asking about placements how long they are and about salary about whether they're typically in line with the uk living wage so first of all just to uh, be clear the placement that we will be offering will be three months so it's three months in length. Um, it's not a bursary. It is actually a paid placement. So you go onto the payroll of the production company. So that's what happened with, um, with Heidi and with Lucy. So um, they're actually employed by their own production companies um, and Netflix facilitates all of that. In terms of this, uh, the salary, yes, it is going to be, um, you know, reflecting the UK uh, living wage. That's very important because we're not here to exploit people. It's really important that um, we bring down the barriers. So for anything, if you go into the scheme, anything that you um, need to um, participate in, which has a financial cost in terms of turning up to, um, you know, um, for the training in London, um, if we're going to be doing networking events, if you need to stay over. So for those of you who are outside of London, the training in London, outside of London and going to be coming to London, we have um, booked accommodation for you and we will be paying for your transport and um, we provide um, um, you know, per diems or we will give you, take you out for dinner. So all of that is all taken care of. Audrey, do you want to add anything else? Is there anything else to add on to that in terms of that in the financial piece for people? Uh no, just to say, we, we generally sit just above London living wage. So it's not even just the UK when we make sure we're aware that your placement is most likely to be London. So but everybody gets the same salary no matter where your placement is. So just so everyone's clear. Yeah. OK. Um, so one about uh, UK rights and power, somebody who's work, living in uh, currently in the Netherlands. We'll come back to that separately. Um, but. Uh, I don't see that being a problem. It's about you committing to the pro program. So if you get onto the scheme, you obviously have to be living and working here in the UK. And it is about then, you know, understanding that you want to be working here in the UK. But I don't see that being a problem, basically. Um, so that's Olivia. That's all fine, isn't it, um, Audrey? 
yeah, that's great. Um, we've still got a few minutes. Has anybody else got any questions at all? Um, how long is the application selection? Um, Joanne, do you want to actually expand the selection period? Um, so we put um, and published online what the, what the schedule is. So I, can't, I think we're closing on the 22nd of, of um, September. And Tanya, can you, if you're looking online, I can see you appearing on the screen. Can you just put in the chat? chat yeah, 19th when... of October would be um, the interviews. So there you go. Um, everything is up on the website. So please do go on um, and look at that. Um, we've got a few more minutes. Has anybody else got any questions as we're going along? Because I don't think there's anything else in the chat. Otherwise, um, Heidi and Lucy, have you got any top tips for the guys who are on the call now um, about, you know, you've been through the scheme, you've got hindsight. What would you say that um, you, you wish you knew when you were applying that you know now? We can start with start with Heidi. Can you can you think of anything um, in, in a few sentences for me? What 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 would hindsight tell you now? Um, just to go with your gut instinct, turn up as yourself be open-minded it is a scheme for career changes um and all different backgrounds I think a lot of the times in the arts you're thinking you know oh, do I fit that role or am I going to be suitable for this yeah but I you know just apply because um yeah it's it's been life-changing for me and um it's sort of um I have found every part of the scheme very reassuring in terms of people I've met, um, the Grierson team and like the peer support that you get. So yeah, really reassuring and yeah, go with your gut instinct and apply. Thanks Heidi and, and Lucy, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give you the last word on this because then we can uh, go to the mentee and just do the thanks. What, what would you say now being through the scheme or well, you're on mute yeah I would probably say like first of all um, make sure that you know that production management's for you because um, this is all geared towards production management and if you're not sure then maybe explore both areas um, and um, make sure that you watch documentaries because um, when I applied to the scheme, I was like, I don't know if I what, what I want to do, if I want to do scripted or documentary. And then I was like, yeah, I did what Heidi did. I was like, I'll go with my gut. And I'm like, well, I watch documentaries and I watch Netflix. I watch all of them. And I don't actually watch scripted shows. So this is obviously what I should do. So that's that's what I did. And, you know, even if even if like, you don't have so I was really like unsure I was like I don't think I'll get this I don't have the right experience I don't have any like tv experience or work experience or anything but it's not so much about like what skills you have it was so much more about your passion and your potential in the interview and just yeah just believe in yourself yeah thank you Lucy I think you know one thing that I say to anybody who's approaching any of the training schemes that we have and they've got a question mark and sit on the fence I say you've got nothing to lose actually what's the worst that could happen and what's the best that could happen the best is that you you apply and actually you you do shine in a way and you 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 shouldn't be underestimating yourself so there's nothing to lose please do uh I was going to say pick up the pen, but we don't do pen and paper anymore. It's all on screen. Um, please do apply. And if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to get back to us. Um, I'd, I'd like to thank um, Audrey and Lou, uh, Lou uh, Lucy and Heidi. Thank you very much for your time. But last thing I'd like to ask of the of the group here today is just to go back to Menti. And um, it's a, a moment because we've only got a couple of minutes just to, for you guys to reflect and ask you to just consider um, a couple of questions for me. Um, hopefully you uh, you are able to see my screen up great you can see it so um, the question is do you feel more informed about working in documentaries now and if not I suppose it's about what else can we be doing um, to help you um, you know what what bits of information do you feel that you're still missing and that's an opportunity for you to either come back to us or read the FAQs and um, 
you know, um, yeah, do more research. But, yeah. It's great for a few of you able to do that. And then I think my last question, because I'm just looking at the time there. Um, for those of you who are going to apply or thinking of applying, do you feel more confident? Have we helped you um, if you were swayed, if you were unsure, if you were curious now, having heard um, from our brilliant speakers and um, you know sharing this information with you, how, how, how do you feel? Are you going to actually... Um, pick up that figurative pen and actually put pen to paper and apply for our scheme. Thank you. And um, the last thing, if you have any comments, really, please do share. The mentee will be open for two days. So, um, and this um, applies for anybody who might be watching this um, later on, because I know that um, I've had quite a few emails from people saying they can't join us today. If you have any questions or you want any comments, please use the mentee or um, please use our, our um, email address, which is uh, training at grierson.org. That's brilliant. Thank you very much. I'm just going to stop sharing now because we've only got a couple of minutes. Um, I think that's everything. Any, anything else? Does anybody else want to uh, say anything? Uh, Audrey, um, thank you very much. Uh, Lou, thank you. Louise, sorry, Lucy and Heidi, thank you very much for joining us today. So um, with that, um, I'm going to close the, the call. Any questions, please don't hesitate to um, get in touch. This recording will be made available and will be up on our um, 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 YouTube and Vimeo channel. And also you'll be able to get a link via our website um, in the next day or two. Um, but otherwise, with that, um, enjoy the rest of your evening and best of luck if you're going to be applying. And if not, I um, uh, hope you find the path that you're seeking if you're being um, a career changer. Thanks a lot. Bye.